Riders Arena is a virtual robotics and coding competition platform. Your goal is to build, code, and program your robot in the best way possible and while following the rules of the competition. Another goal for the competitors in Riders is to get the highest score possible for your robot and to beat your opponents with the algorithm you create in order to win cool prizes. Let's show you how a robot is programmed on Riders and let's get started. To get signed up on the Riders platform, first go to riders.ai using your web browser. You will be able to log into the system via the login button presented on the page, and you will be sent an email with all your account information. In Riders, you are given a robot in a staging environment to develop your code base, and we call this a project. You will see all your past and current projects on your profile page. When you select the project and click the edit button, it will ask you to choose one of the previous versions of your code base and whether you want to proceed from where you left off most recently with your code. After the page is finished loading, a coding editor, also known as an IDE or Integrated Development Environment, will open up. This editor is called RIDE or what stands for Robotics Integrated Development Environment. Now, let's program our robot using Ride in an example project. After the Ride editor is loaded, the first thing you should do is click the Riders logo on the left frame and click the Build Project button, which is placed at the bottom of the Riders project tree. The project you're working on includes the stage you left off at most recently, and you can continue building and coding your robot from that point. Once you are finished building and coding your robot, you will see a new subsection called Simulation on the left frame. When we click the Start button in this section, our virtual robot and stage will begin to operate and our code will execute. And the simulation environment called the Riders Arena will be displayed. In this particular project, our robot is not moving on the screen at first. The robot is awaiting for a command from the user in order to begin moving. For this project, we have a set of two walls surrounding the robot. On the other side of the maze, we have our target location we need to get the robot to. Pretty easy, right? But first, let's discuss how you navigate within the simulation environment. We can adjust the screen by clicking left on the mouse. You may click and hold the shift button or scroll wheel on your mouse to turn the screen. You may use the scroll wheel also on your mouse to zoom in and out as well. If we zoom in too much or somehow manage to lose our robot in the simulation environment on the screen, we may reset the simulator to bring the robot back into its original position by closing the simulation screen and clicking on the View Simulator button. Now let's go back to our robot. The robot isn't moving, as you may have noticed. This is because we have not executed or written our code to make the robot move yet. Let's have a look at how we code in the rider simulation environment in order to get our robot moving. You will find a source file that you may use to code when you go to the nodes section. You can start coding by opening this nodes file. We also have prepared a library for your robot. You can find the document for this library over here. As you see, all the commands and comments are written in this document. We are ready now. Let's get our robot moving with some example code. We should open the coding screen in the nodes section again and drag and drop the screen to the right side in order to adjust the layout format so you can see both the robot and your code base at the same time. First, let's start with a simple command move. Our code editor helps you auto-complete this feature or function and also shows the parameters of different commands as you code. When we finish our code, all we have to do is select the reset button inside of the simulation section. When we do this, our simulation will restart again take the robot back to its original position and run the code. Let's see if this command will take us to our target. Whoops, the robot hit the wall. As you can see, it is not as simple as it seems. 
We need some additional code in order to accomplish the goal of this maze. Let's reset and enhance our robot with some additional coding functions. One of them is a distance measurement sensor. We have three of these sensors placed in the front of our robot. We can measure the proximity of the objects around us via these distant measurement sensors. Another tool our coding function will need is a simple command. This time it's a rotation command called rotate. We can try and test this command right away on riders to see if it works. All you have to do is click reset in order to test the code right away. Our robot rotates around. Can you see this live data coming from its sensors? We are now ready to write and execute our code base using the information we get from the distance sensors and take our robot to the final target point in the maze without crashing into the walls. It seems like it will be enough to rotate our robot according to the distance information coming from our sensors. Let's build some example code for this and restart our simulation environment by clicking reset. Let's speed this up and you can see what happens a little faster to our robot. As you can see, the robot reaches the target location in the maze, keeping itself on the middle point throughout the way. However, we don't have a line of code to stop the robot. Maybe you can get back into the code base to add this functionality, right? Finally, don't forget to click stop to terminate your simulation environment once you're finished coding in the editor. Otherwise, the simulation environment will keep running in the cloud. Thank you for watching this demonstration of how Riders works. You're now ready to compete in a Riders competition. Good luck and your opponents are awaiting you.